Good morning. Today is Friday, the fifth day of February in this 2021st year of our Lord. Today I'd like to continue on my series <clears throat> discussing and sharing insight on the Lord's Prayer. Uh, and I have a small reading I'll share from uh, this little book, which uh, many of you may find hidden on your shelves. But this is uh, Luther's small catechism. This is one that uh, was given to me uh, a long time ago. It's uh, printed uh, for the General Synod, which was predecessor to all of the current Lutheran uh, denominational churches in the United States. This probably dates back to the 1800s. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Regarding the introduction to the Catechism uh, and, and Luther's words on the Lord's Prayer, Our Father, who art in heaven. What does our Savior teach us in this preface? That God would affectionately invite us to believe and to be assured that he is truly our Father and that we are his children indeed and to call upon him with all cheerfulness and confidence, even as beloved children entered a kind and affection, uh, yeah, even as beloved children entreat a kind and affectionate parent. And again, from a large catechism by Robert Jensen, <coughs> Thus, the prayer our Lord taught us is the foundation prayer of all our other prayers. It is because Jesus' disciples are invited by him to share his relationship to God, to call on God as Father, that we dare pray at all. However, others may muster such courage. It is because we may pray this prayer that we can pray other prayers as well. So also the prayer our Lord taught us is our everyday prayer. It contains no petitions for specific needs or praise for specific blessings. This does not mean such petitions or praises are, are not to be offered, but we will not pray for rain during a flood or thank God for peace in the midst of battle. And the Lord's prayer is to be offered always. It is the general prayer of Jesus' disciples. Thus it deals only with God's triumph and our, uh, and our own need. The Father to whom we pray is so individual a God that he is not only named, but is located. He is in heaven. The force of this phrase is first negative. We do not pray to anything on earth. It is not to Caesar, or to the stars and stripes, or an inner voice, or any other creature that we may turn in every time of need. Even the resurrected Lord refused Mary's adoration, so long as he was not yet ascended to the Father. By praying with this phrase, we obey the command to have no other gods, to eschew our call commence with divinized bits of our environment. Heaven is not earth. What then is it? Throughout scripture, heaven is where God is. But also heaven is created with earth. It is not the place of God's sheer otherness as creator. Putting the two together, heaven is God's residence inside our own creation, which is another place than earth, is not our residence in creation. It is in heaven that we look where, when we pray. But still again, where is that? It was to God's right hand in heaven that our Lord ascended. Where then do we direct our attention, our eyes and ears, when we call on him? How are we to look for him in heaven? To this question, two answers have been given in the history of the church's thinking, which are so different and which make so much difference 
for the whole life of the church, that the argument between them cannot be avoided even in a catechism, at least if it is a large one. Through most of theological history, it has been supposed that heaven is one place among the many places of creation. Thus, it was thought one could get from heaven to other places in creation, and vice versa, by motion. So Jesus was thought to have ascended from earth to heaven by moving upward until he got there. Nor was there anything irrational or implausible about this picture until Copernicus. Such science as his, however, made it impossible to say where such a place could be. And what is a place that is not anywhere? My own just stated rule should, of course, compel me to say, so much the worse for philosophical questions like the last one, were it not that there is an entire other way of locating heaven. For Martin Luther, and his followers had no problem with Copernicus. They did not, in the first place, think of heaven as one place among other places. Luther turned the questions and answers around. Where is heaven? Luther answered, wherever God is. And where is that? And Luther answered, where he promised to be, on the Eucharistic table, holding the cup of cold water given in Jesus' name, resounding from the place where the gospel is spoken. Readers will discern that I think the Lutherans are right, but all the reason is not on one side. The test case has always been the question, how does it happen that the bread and wine of Eucharist are Jesus' body that is, occupy the space where he is, so that we can find him by finding them. Most Christians have supposed that heaven, where the risen Jesus is, and the space occupied by the bread and cup are two different places. Some have been thought a special supernatural act of God needed to transcend this separation, and others have supposed that it is our faith to which distance in space is ir uh, irrelevant that transcends it. Lutherans have thought that the space occupied by the bread and cup is heaven, in which our Lord is with the Father, so that there is no separation to transcend. And I will say more of this when we come to the catechetical segment on the supper. I've always visioned heaven as being in the presence of God, and that is where we evoke the name of the Father to be with us, to be in us. Jesus seems to affirm that conclusion that God is within, and if God's residence is heaven, Heaven is as close as we are when the gospel is spoken, when acts of love and kindness are practiced, when we celebrate the gift of Jesus' presence in our very midst in the Lord's Supper. Heaven is among us, around us, a distance from us. And that gives an interesting concept because those whom we love are also then near to us. Those who are departed and who reside with God in his heavenly places must be nearer than we would think. Not some distant, faraway place, but the sense of their spirit and their presence often surrounds us, guides us, leads us, and shows us the way, just as Jesus still does, though he is not physically with us in human form, but abides with the Father in heaven. But his influence continues and has changed and transformed this world for over 2,000 years. Rudiment a bit on that concept of where heaven is for you. I'm not sure if there are any right or wrong answers when we think that heaven is the abiding place of God and where God might be with you is where his very residence is. 
and let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for your nearness to us. For you are, as you hear our very voices, as you respond to our very needs, as you provide for us those things that are needful for living, our daily bread. We thank you for the gift of your Christ, who came and dwelt by our side in human form to show us your more sacred and holy way. We give you thanks that you take us to be with you, to abide in your presence when we can no more abide in this earthly realm in which we call home. Help us this day, O Lord, to walk the pathways that you would show us. Help your gospel to inform our very living and life in your presence. And grant your strength and your help to all who suffer and who have needs far greater than we. For those still afflicted by COVID-19, for families that are distraught over the loss of loved ones, for the healing help that physicians and nurses and medical technicians and scientists bring to us in times of great need. We thank you for the progress of vaccines, and we pray that there will be a good and fair and equitable distribution of those sooner than later. Empower us, O oh Lord, to be your light in this world, a day that is overcast and brings a little bit of darkness. Be our light of love one to another. To care for us as we each have need. And hear now our petitions that we offer up to you in the silence of this moment. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we have uh, rain in Myrtle Beach. I think the temperatures are a little more moderate than yesterday. Uh, be safe wherever you are in the midst of the freeze of the north or storms that are impending on you. And God's presence surround you with his love. God bless you. Amen.